Hello everybody, my name is Julian, or Flow Graphics, or I guess Flow Studio as well. This is the latest Dev Diary update for Lens Island, which is an exciting one. I know I haven't produced one of these videos for a long time, about a month or so, so there's a whole bunch of stuff to actually show you all as we've released the demo for Lens Island. The demo is now out to all the Kickstarter backers. We have so much new stuff to show, it's incredible. Uh, we've just, yeah, we've been working really, really hard. There's been a lot of sleepless nights over the past few months, and I can't wait to show you everything, starting with uh, crits, there is now critical hits inside the game and this is like a big system that I'm going to actually explain in some more detail. There's a whole bunch of other updates as uh, trees fade now when you go behind them, a whole bunch of building updates, there's also more updates to screenshot mode and I guess sort of a cinematic mode where you can actually take nice sort of cinematic panning shots and things of the world and in general a whole bunch of updates but initially let's start with a farming update and if you haven't wishlisted the game on Steam yet make sure to do that now. We actually finally made it onto the top wishlist page on the Steam store, which is really exciting because now we're in the same group as all, you know, AAA games and all these big publishers and big game studios, which is really, really crazy. So uh, we want to try and sort of rank up that list as much as we can. So make sure to wishlist it if you haven't already. And yeah, let's talk about farming. As we're still in the middle of working on this farming update, I think it's going to be a lot easier to show you this visually in Photoshop. So here's something I prepared earlier. Let's drag in a farm here. This is a normal farm. Imagine it just like Minecraft or something where it's basically like a three by three grid. So farms are basically almost exactly the same as foundations in Lens Island where you can place them, you can change the height and you can place them anywhere in terrain and they'll, they'll snap together. So I can place two farms like this, except they will have like a contextual uh, mesh. So then if I place two farms next to each other, the sort of the railing or whatever, like the edging to the garden bed will sort of disappear in the middle of them. And then it'll just sort of like seamlessly become um, like like one big sort of rectangle garden bed and there's different styles for them So you can get stone edging and wood edging and all sorts of stuff uh, There's also garden beds. So if I turn off all of these Here's uh, something I prepared earlier with some foundations uh, and then there's a garden bed So this is basically a way to make the same farms except a smaller scale onto foundations because these ones automatically snap to the middles of uh, foundations or ceilings. So this is how you can have little garden beds actually like on your house or around your house, um, even inside your house as well. If you want a little sort of indoor farm or something, these have like two by two slots for sort of uh, fitting crops and plants. These are plants. So imagine these are different stages of growing. Uh, pretty much all the plants in the game will have, I guess, four stages of growing. They'll have their seedlings. So all plants will start out, out as a little seedling like this little guy here. Um, and then they'll grow to a small sort of version and then like a medium version and then a, a large fully grown version. So I'm trying to plant my farm and then I walk up to my farm and depending where I hover my mouse, it will just hover over each one of these like slots. Um, so if I drag a little, let's make it yellow so it's noticeable and it'll like light up a little thing depending on what slot I'm sort of selected on. And I'm basically like, I'm, that's how I plant on the farm. Um, all the planning to do with farms is actually the UI and the interface is all based on the farm. It's not on the player. So I'll just select over that slot there and then it will bring, and then if I click F or click on that slot, um, it will bring up this radial menu. And that's this radial menu is all of the different uh, farming resources. So imagine it's blueberries and pumpkins and this and that and watermelon. Uh, and just like the build edit menu, it will just sort of pop up with the ones like the ones that are interactable or the ones that I actually have some of that resource available to use and then I could just click on like the watermelon or the pumpkin or something and then it would um, spawn a little pumpkin seedling in that location um, and then I've just planted a pumpkin seedling and then it will sort of take one pumpkin out of my inventory. Another thing too we will have is pot plants. So there are, there, well there's one pot plant in the game at the moment but we're introducing a lot more um, in the coming updates. That's a, ter <laughs> that's a terrible pot plant. Um, so yeah, there's a pot plant that you can barely see. Let's drag it over the grass. And um, the exact same thing will happen with that. So I can hover over the pot plant. And what we'll do is just like when you play, place a pot plant in the game, it will just sort of place a generic like bush, like a, gr a green sort of just normal, just bush, like no nothing too interesting. And that would be the generic pot plant that it will place down. And then if I hover over that with that same um, interaction system, it will pop up the same radial menu around the pot plant. And then what I can actually do is, this is just for decoration and just for visuals, but I can plant one of my farming resources in this pot plant and then suddenly make this pot plant like a blueberry pot plant. And then it'll be covered in blueberries and like slightly changed the way it looks. These blueberries won't grow. I won't be able to harvest them or anything. It's just for looks. It's just because instead of just having a bland, normal sort of bush, um, I can have something that looks cool. 
And then if you get sort of rare fruits and rare resources and things, you can actually like display them and show them off in your pot plants. That's the whole idea because that's why people have pot plants. Uh, there's also going to be water towers and wells and different ways to water your plants because you will need to water the crops to keep them um, like moist. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, there's a few other aspects, but in a general sense, that's sort of how the farming works. And uh, yeah, look, there'll be a lot more about this. I'll be showing some more practical uses of the farming in the next video where we have more of the system developed and I'll be able to actually show you it in practice, but that's a general idea of how it all works. So look, let's talk about crits because that's the next big update that's happened. Crits inside of Lens Island are not a random system, they're actually skill-based, which means if I click at the next attack at the perfect time, you can hear this little jing, and that means you proc a crit. So all weapons have a small window, uh, basically like a click window, and if you click at that perfect moment, the next attack will always be a critical hit, uh, which basically adds a really big skill ceiling to the game, which makes resource gathering and combat and all these systems so much more fun because you can get good at them. You can get really, really good at them and be really effective at what you're doing. And you can see this little bubble popping up. That's that window, which also means it's really easy for us to design because we could have a major sword, for example, that does more damage, but does a lower crit strike, which means uh, sort of noobs at the game are gonna do more damage using that weapon. But then on the other hand, if we have a weapon that has a smaller base damage, but a bigger crit strike, it will do less damage if you uh, don't hit crits. But if you do, it will do way more damage, which means it's better for masters. This crit system basically allows us as developers to add a lot of depth and a lot of skill based items into the game, just creating a lot of variance and sort of diversity to the system because the way weapons and tools work in Lens Island is you can freely swing at anything. So any sort of interactable object can take damage from any item. Uh, different items just have different efficiencies versing those objects. For example, I can hit this stone with a, uh, an ax, like a wood cutting ax, and it'll only do one damage or three damage on a crit, but then an actual pickaxe will do six damage or 12 damage on a crit. This just allows us to get really complex results from a seemingly basic system, which is perfect. And I'm gonna talk a lot more about this in future combat updates, but for now, I'm just gonna go sort of rapid fire and talk about all the quick little updates and changes that were made to Lens Island over the past month or so. Trees now fade uh, when they obstruct the player's view. This is still something we're working on and we need to sort of perfect, but it's in the game and it does work, so you won't be sort of stuck behind trees not being able to see anymore. There's been a lot of little changes and improvements with building and editing. Uh, to begin with, the edit menu now has this UI that pops up so you can actually escape and exit. Um, it also just tells you that edit mode is active and you can press F to toggle it as there is a hotkey as well. Uh, as people were leaving on edit mode accidentally, we found, and just sort of playing the whole game with it open and not even realizing. So we've made it very obvious when edit mode is active as well as build mode as well. So if I uh, go to build something, uh, there's also a sort of a hot key to multi-place, which I just added in with some text on the top of the screen there. So if I do hold alt, I can just place multiple foundations like this, um, but then I can just click and drag and not hold alt and place single foundations. It seemed people didn't really realize that there's actually a uh, tab menu here to change what type of sort of default style that you build in. So I made that a lot more obvious with this button as you don't have to actually build in wood and then upgrade to stone. You can simply change this menu and then just upgrade and just build in stone to begin with. Another one of these little changes is actually to the resource menu. We added in uh, hover states for the resources. So if you hover over them, um, it'll actually tell you a little description and it'll also show you how many um, sort of slots you have filled up of that resource. So I've obviously hacked the game here um, because all these resources have a max capacity of 250, which we also indicate up here on the top right. Um, these sort of bars also indicate that, but they're all full for me because I have well over 250. Uh, and then again, it also tells you in the description on the bottom right hand um, corner there where you can see it says 852 out of 250. Uh, so lots of little changes like that to UI, really just trying to, I guess, translate all of these things to everyone um, because as developers, we play the game 24 seven. We know how everything works. We made these systems, but sometimes we forget that um, some of these things aren't so obvious to people playing the game for the first time. I've also been hard at work creating lots of new items and, and building pieces for Lens Island. We have dining tables and chairs, a map of the actual uh, island in the full game, uh, circular windows, different roof types, and there's lots more of these building and decoration items to come. And these will be included in the farming update. There's also a new building style I've been working on, which is called the ornate building style. This is something that has a bit more of a Mediterranean feel, 
a bit different to all the other styles in the game currently, and I'm really liking the look of this. I think it looks awesome, and we're almost finished, to be honest, um, on this style, so we're hoping to get this in for the farming or combat update to the demo. Uh, we're going to have a lot more details about the demo for everyone wondering, um, as we will be releasing it to the public at a later stage, um, but that's still yet to come. I'll, I'll talk about it more in a later video. There's also been a lot of audio work done to the game um, and UI as well. So we have proper pause menus and everything implemented too, as well as the screenshot mode. So we've sort of overhauled the screenshot mode a little bit, um, adding in um, a whole bunch of new sort of camera commands. So you can now just tilt and pan the camera up and down as well as move it. Um, you can also hit caps lock to turn off the UI, which means you can make lots of really nice looking sort of cinematic shots and and pans and everything and then if you turn on depth of field and and play with those settings too um, you can get some some really nice looking shots inside the game um, which is something that wasn't sort of possible before um, and I also increased uh, the zoom limits of the camera too so you can actually zoom right out and look out to the ocean and get all sorts of really nice shots uh, so that's a, a pretty nice update um, but also to do with the menu um, there's a, a music slider now so you actually hear some music in the background and to do with music, we've also added in a whole bunch of music. So there's a big, big audio update that's happened recently to the game, adding in several different music tracks that automatically trigger through different uh, times of day. Um, and then you can control the volume using this. And there's also different graphic settings and other things you can do as well. I'll be talking a bit more about the music and audio update in a future video. I might get Lars to actually talk about all of that himself as he's probably a bit better explaining it than I am. And uh, yeah, look, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, sorry again for not making the video for a little while. We've just been so hard at work making this game. It's it, it's hard to sort of gauge what it's like to be a game developer from the sorts of devlogs that you see on YouTube. But yeah, look, we work like minimum 12 hours a day every single day on this game. It's our, it's our heart and soul. It's our entire life is just making this game. So it can be a bit hard to sort of be putting out demo updates and be doing all these big things while also trying to make YouTube videos at the same time. And of course the game will remain my top priority. If the, if I uh, need spare time to make the game better, I will prefer that than making a YouTube video. Uh, unfortunately, uh, but that's just the way it is. So hopefully I will be getting a bit more spare time to make more videos, seeing as we're not on so many deadlines um, now that we have the demo out. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to make lots of new content for all of you. So as always, I hope you have an amazing day. Don't forget to wishlist the game if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.